What's going on, guys? This is Not Your Ordinary Guy. This is your motivation guy. I was born to motivate you, man. I don't know if you've just been, you know, losing a lot. I don't know if you've been going through with relationships or you're having trouble at home. Like, no matter what it is, man, your motivation guy is inspiring you. This is your friend, Keith Allen. Man, I'm so excited today. Bunch of Crunch Army. Man, where are you guys at? So in Fortnite, saying somebody has good mechanics usually means they're proficient in three areas, aiming, building, and editing. But there's still one crucial mechanic not a lot of people understand and what i'm talking about today ladies and gentlemen i'm talking about movement knowing the proper way to move your character can be game changing whether in a box fight build battle or even outside of engagements entirely and honestly from what we've seen movement is still one of the most notable things separating amateur players from pros so today i'm going to be showing you everything that you need to know about movement why it's so important man like some techniques that you can use to win fights and also the best methods out there that you can use significantly to improve your movement skills if that sounds good to you make sure you like the video and subscribe you know with the bell button on for more tips and tricks and also the vod analysis feature on our website has just received a discount yes i just said discount guys so for a smaller price you can get your gameplay thoroughly analyzed by a pro and save you lots of time you gotta check it out in the link below before we get started bunch of crunch army it's time to sit back relax and grab some of my favorite candy yell it out it's that bunch of crunch and let's get this going First of all, why is it proper movement so important? Well, let me tell you this. It really comes down to the avoidance of damage. Having unpredictable or erratic movement will make it harder for your opponent to track you, which means they're going to miss more shots. The most obvious example that I can give is sprinting in a straight line out in the open. Like if you do that, any player worth their salt is easily going to line up a shot and just snipe you right in the dome. But if you're always switching up the direction you run, they're going to be much more likely to miss. And the same type of rule really applies to close range engagements. Standing still for too long or not incorporating side strafes will turn you into a target dummy. So you gotta be unpredictable, my friends. You gotta do that. All right, so with all that said, like how can we be more unpredictable? Who wants to know that? All right, here we go. Well, first of all, there's strafing. Alternating between left and right strafes in close range shotgun duels is vital if you want to lower the damage you receive. One problem though is that, you know, like pure left and pure right strafes move your character somewhat slowly. So instead, you should always try to use diagonal movement where you can since that has you moving a bit quicker. As for which direction is better, hmm. Ideally, you know, you want to stray forward and to the right of your opponent. This moves you behind their character model, making it a lot more difficult for them to see you. For example, let's take a look at this FNCS clip from pro player Kalazo. After getting shredded by an AR, he does his best to expand and just buy time, but ends up getting left with nowhere to go. Pay attention to how he reacts though. He instinctively strafes to the right, which causes his opponent to only hit for 22. All right, so the next shot that they land is much more substantial since Colazzo stood still, but he strafes to the left and due to some kind of miracle, pulls through. Had Colazzo not strafed right before getting shot, he wouldn't have had survived this fight, proving how useful strafing can actually be. But while strafing left and right is a must, it's not the only way to be unpredictable. There's also vertical movement. And no, I don't mean spamming jump. I'm talking about small vertical movements that you can make on ramps or cones. Okay, so we all know by now how to attach a backward ramp to boxes we want to pressure, but many of us don't take full advantage of the movement aspect. Okay, so what you want to do on ramps as you pickaxe or spray is move slightly up and down as well as left and right. That way, if your opponent edits, they're going to have to adjust their aim vertically as well as horizontally. And that just makes it so much harder to get, right? Is it a foolproof method of avoiding damage? No, but it definitely helps. And it's something that you got to think the next time you're fighting someone on an elevated surface. All right, guys, moving on. I want to talk about one of the best ways to practice your movement, especially diagonal movement. And no, it's not death runs. I'm talking about a map that helps you learn strafing techniques while also aiming at targets, bro. Aiming while moving is a lot more complicated than if you just stand still. You know, you just need to adjust your aim for every strife, counter strafe, jump, and crouch you throw in. So this creative map by Machine Right, a Fortnite coach and YouTuber helps us get better. By the way, Machine Right makes some seriously in-depth content, so you gotta go over and check him out. He goes over all small details like movement, proper peaks, and you guys definitely, man, I'm telling you, it really, really helps. 
we'll have this link below. But basically, all right, this map has you follow a white line while you strafe left or right and just spray targets. There are occasional obstacles you need to jump or crouch to get past as well. So this map trains it all. Not only does this map help you attain a better grasp of character movement, but it also trains your aim. One more thing you keyboard and mouse players can do on this map is learn double movement keybinds. I'm sure you may know by now, but controller movement is quite different from the movement keyboard players get. They have much better control over sideways sprinting than keyboard players do, and that leaves keyboard players at a small disadvantage, at least movement-wise. But one way that we can get that movement is by setting a second key to move left and right, and then pressing both those keys simultaneously. So if you're just starting out though, like I wouldn't worry about double movement buttons just yet, they're pretty hard to get used to, especially when you bring, you know, building into the equation. So I say you only really need to progress to them like once you've perfected normal movement. All right, guys, so moving on, let's talk about character acceleration and how you want to include that in your edits. OK, so as we said earlier, forward diagonal movement has a much higher speed than just strafing. So anytime you make an edit, you generally want to move diagonally into it, right? Then shoot. For instance, let's say that you got a window edit that you want a right hand peek. Instead of just slowly peeking the window with the normal strafe, you should sprint diagonally toward it so that you're moving faster. That way, your opponent is less likely to time their shot on you. Same thing applies to things like the peanut butter edit. Instead of just making the edit, stopping behind your wall and then going for the jump shot, you can just sprint diagonally, make the edit while running, then go for the jump shot. You can perform peanut butter peaks way quicker. All right, guys, lastly, I want to talk about a couple more movement techniques that you can use to avoid damage. All right, here we go. One being crouch spamming. So I'm sure that you've seen pro players do this. Basically, the whole thing like with crouch spamming is to minimize and expand your character model as much as possible to mess with your opponent's head level crosshair placement. And these are just two ways to crouch spam. First, it's just repeatedly hitting your crouch button. But the faster pro level method is to crouch, press jump to uncrouch and repeat. So if you play keyboard and mouse with default binds, it'll be control and space bar you're spamming. This other one isn't really a technique, but it's more something that you shouldn't do as often as you think. And that's jumping. Okay, so a lot of us, especially newer players, make the mistake of spamming jump nonstop. While your jumping isn't always bad, in most cases, you're just making it easier for your opponent to just line up their shot. In close range fights, yes, but especially running out in the open, man. So snipers are just so easy to line up against jumping targets. So if you instead stay on the ground and then change directions unpredictably, you're gonna be much better off. Of course, there's still a small chance, you know, you're gonna get sniped even with proper movement, but you know what? I'd rather leave it to chance than give my opponent an easy shot. All right, so despite all of that, there are a few instances where jumping is worth it, all right? Like one, if you need to look behind you when rotating, another, as if you're going for a jump shot of some kind. And lastly, jumping in fights can be useful, but only if you time it right as your opponent is about to shoot. That way, your jump might mess up their shot enough to point where it matters. But again, the timing is in a tight window as you've got to predict when they're going to shoot. But if you can pull this off, man, it can lead to you avoiding the entire shot. All right, guys, so that's it for the movement tips. But we got to do a recap of the techniques that we learned real quick. You guys ready? Let's go. Strafe left and right to throw up your opponent's aim. But if you have a choice, move diagonally to the right and toward them. And so you can end up behind their character model. Anytime that you're on a ramp or cone, take advantage of the vertical movement to become harder to hit. When you go for edits or peaks, keep as much character momentum as you swing into it by strafing diagonally. And lastly, my friends, remember not to jump too often unless you're timing it right as your opponent goes to shoot. Also, crouch spamming is a viable way to reduce the chance of getting a headshot while spraying long distances or in a close range fight. All right, guys, once again, this is not your ordinary guy. This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the tips. And uh, man, if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment telling me what you like to see next. And don't forget, ProGuys.com has professional coaches waiting 24-7 to help you become the best player that you can be. And uh, keep eating that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going.